All right. So all I said was this sand's great. That was on YouTube in the future, because it is. I've got just a ridiculously strong curve here. Turn one, we're on the play against Winter Moon. Turn one, Seer. Turn two, Crackling Bolt you. Activate Bombus, hit you for two. Turn three, Landing Plus Sight. Just like crush him with guard advantage. Yep, man. You can dirtle around. You can be proactive this game. Prophecy of Rage Fire. That's pretty good, too. Metman with the 2 month 3 sub. Thank you for the continued support. I'm glad you're enjoying hacks. Welcome back. Rawr. Now the question is, do we sight or rage fire next turn? I think we're supposed to sight, because I want to get it under counter magic. Getting getting a draw three in the bank is pretty pretty great. I've seen some of the Boris type configurations, like the ooh, this is this is something new. Okay. Is that, is this, oh, this must be the Turbo Fog deck. Okay, that makes sense. Think this is a good matchup for us. So this usually means out of Winter Moon, uh, Turbo Fog is uh, an archetype that we refer to, um, where basically your deck just plays a bunch of prevent all damage cards and counter spells and stuff like that to eventually draw the game out where you would beat your opponent with some kind of one really narrow win condition. Sometimes they play Chronic Madness. Sometimes they play the Silver Spear. Hey, Sightbound, evening. Yeah, even the cheaper, like, Skarn combat training builds are really powerful. They push a lot of damage very quickly. So, opponent's Winter Moon activation puts two cards from his crypt back into his deck. Hey, Waffle. You play this draw card. Alright. So, I'm going to lead on... Get Ruby here. Now there's definitely merit to playing the Rage Fire because it just gets back into our deck, but I'm actually going to Crackling Bolt him, and the reason for this is um, let's max activate my champion ability, and then we actually drew combat training, which might have just been one of the best draws in the deck there. Let's like start pushing damage. Get in for another three here, so if I'm just going to nine, this is a virtual seven, assuming it resolves. If he is playing a Turbo Fog configuration, usually they don't have a lot of removal, so we'll see. Worth noting that the best fog type effect in the game in Lullaby uh, reverts the troops that it prevents damage from, so it'll remove all the combat training bonuses from this. So if he leaves up two resources here, I don't think I'm going to combat training before I attack. If he spends all of his resources, I'm definitely going to combat training, obviously. He's putting two more cards from his crypt back into his deck. Hopefully we can just pressure our opponent into those cards not being relevant. Now we drew another one. That's a little unfortunate. Hmm. I'm going to reach for his dome and see what we draw here to start. This is prophesized. Zygomot's game. That card's not particularly good in this matchup. Um, arcane focus, see what we find. Uh, oh, that's awkward. So, had two different prophesized cards on top of our deck there. There might be merit to waiting to play this post-combat, because I'm pretty sure my opponent has a lullaby here, and then I could just combat training post-combat and get it back. Yeah, so it's going to revert it and take all this text off of it. Um, if I didn't draw the second combat training, I definitely would wait for the post-combat, because like now it doesn't come back to my hand, because it takes all that extra text off of it. How long How long have I been streaming today, or in general? We've been live for six minutes. It's nice that could be a long stream, maybe just an hour or so. I'm just going to hop on and play some matches with this, so I figured I might as well fire it up. Activates his ability. Hey, hey, you're okay. We're gonna put the drink away. You're too little for that. Just a moment. Hmm. 
We fell over on our trike. It was a travesty. Rage fire. That's not bad. So, hmm. I'm actually going to hold off on the combat train. I'm just going to attack for two here. If he has another lullaby, he might cast it just to, to save face, basically. Although I guess maybe I'm supposed to combat training there because if he doesn't have it, the rage fire kills him. That's counter magic's pretty good. All right, let's jam this. Our hands are actually pretty bad. These cards are not. Basically, dead draws. Oh, you found card sleeves to throw all over the floor? And no blocks. Hi, Foyer. Good evening. Alright, let's train him up. If he doesn't have, uh,. If he has a lullaby here, both of our combat trainings are gone for good. But if he doesn't have a lullaby, or if he has counter magic, they're gone for good. So let's see what we get here. So combat training gives the troop I target permanently plus one power, and gives it the line of text um, whenever it deals combat damage to your opponent. Uh, well, that's unfortunate. So he played a card that returns all troops to their owner's hand. I'm going to go ahead and put my Thunderfield Elder into play. And then next turn we can go Bot Bot and ship for five. So basically all of his troops have come into play effects. And then he tries to play cards like Yesterday to return troops to their owner's hand. And cards like Lullaby to prevent damage to stall the game out. And he's, he's stabilized at five life here. So he might do what he's looking to do successfully. Let's see if he activates this and puts his Yesterday's back into his deck or not. Just counter magics back in, sure. So we're gonna jam these bumbly bots next turn. Hopefully we just like draw rage fire and kill him. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I love that the created cards are, are different. If he has a third counter magic here in hand, that's a little annoying because it'll increase the cost. God, that's so good. Good beats opponent. Um so counter magic makes this other bumble bot that's in my hand cost two more, so I can't actually play it out. Uh I think I'm just going to jam Ziggy's game and hope to get lucky on both of these. Alright, got lucky on the first one. Two-thirds to get lucky on this one. And we did. And so, Ziggamot's game kills a troop at random, so could have killed my own guy there. But since both of them just hit his two guys, we can attack this 3-2 into here and he can't trade with it, which is nice. He's got some draws in the bank from these Thunderfield Seers. Um, if he hits a shard this turn, though, he's going to be in some trouble. Alright. If he hits the action, the draws him two cards are going to be up a creek, probably. I guess we've got, like, Rage Fires and Crackling Bolts as good draws. Hey, put the chills. This deck's sweet. It wins out of nowhere a lot. Bumblebot, engage. Crash. If the Bumblebot connects, that's great because it means all the Rage Fires in our deck are then lethal because we've already cast one Rage Fire this game. Sweet. So they're all lethal. I'm not going to play out this Ruby Shard because it doesn't do anything for us unless we play an action. Uh, never hold two shards in your hand, but holding one shard is fine. And there's a Prophesied Chlorophilia that draws three cards, so he is right into this game here. And then he concedes. Wow, he must have triple brick. Okay. Well, we're going to cut all those Ziggamots games that we set are real bad and do basically nothing. So let's do, let's do that. Ziggy, you're fired. Um... Verdict of the Ancient King sounds good. Oracle Song sounds good. Transmog might actually not be awful. Because I could turn his Thunderfield. Sears into worse cards. But I think I'd rather just have Burns so, like have some reach. I'm just going to save. I'll just do that. We'll cut the Ziggamots games and brought in the two Verdicts and the two Oracle Songs then the reserves. I think I'm 2-1 in this gauntlet right now. Are you a funny porky baby? <laughs> eh. 
What do we get? What do we get? Uh, this hand's a solid medium. I think I'm gonna keep it. Um, it doesn't look great on the surface, but the crackling bolt on two means that we get to bumblebot on two as well, and then the crackling bolt in the line pause site just seems super powerful. So I think I'm fine with that. Allows us to apply pressure. Starting next week, we will be streaming live magic on Wednesdays. It should be a good time. You're such an angry little toddler, huh? Why is my toddler so angry? I gave you the magic sleeves to play with. The card sleeves. So we're playing Hex today. Any tips for a noob? Um, read the cards. That's, that's the best advice I can give anyone in any game. Like, even even myself, like, especially when, like, the new sets come out in a game and, and you're playing a new game, you, you I, I tend to get into this mindset that, like, oh, I know what that does, and I just click past it, and then it does something that I wasn't, that I wasn't expecting it to do. Whoa! That was interesting. Do you want some water? I opened a water bottle that had a flip lid on it, and a bunch of water shot out of the flip lid. I'm glad it didn't get on anything important. I was wondering this has got like a little flick switch here, and when I unflicked it, water popped out. It's, it's, apologies if I yelled in anyone's ear. <laughs> Do not turn off Dad's computer. You can play with the sleeves, but if you go near the power button, I'm evicting you. Fair warning, child. I have a gate set up around my computer area to keep the toddlers at bay. Oh, oh, it's 10 o'clock. That's right, this is a late stream. Maybe it's time for toddlers to have a bottle and go to bed? No, you don't think so? It's a good thing Dad's in charge and not you. All right, so next turn we get to pop him for one again here. Cast Lanupaw's Sight. That's annoying. Gain for health. Basically, it's a gain eight. It's pretty good against our burn deck. Eviction imminent. You're not wrong. The the eviction is definitely, definitely coming. <laughs> Maybe we'll ask mom to make a round of bottles. Hopefully we can just like pressure off the back of these verdicts here if we had another threat or two. Or even just like making our shard. We got our next two shard drops here. They're going to let us make another bumble bot. And just like slowly beat down with these guys and find rage fires and chain them together. Uh, it's prophesied to draw cards. So we've got three draws in the bank here from this Lanu Plus site coming up. Oh, Arcane Focus, not the worst. Ooh, and when we play it, draw a card because it's prophesized. I'm going to play this one first because he might... Right, that was from the Lanu Plus site. I'm going to take the Thunderfield Elder. Hmm. You are... You are a daredevil. Get down. Ugh. No no disregard, no regard for his own safety. I'm going to play Arcane Focus here. I'm not going to run the Thunderfield Elder out into a possible counter magic. Combat training is pretty good, though. Do you want a combat training or Thunderfield here? Actually, I'm going to Thunderfield here. I don't think I need to hold up Verdict this turn. I'm going to start by attacking for one. I guess he does something that makes us want a Verdict, but I doubt it. The When you get to, when you get to Curve... All right. Why are we such an angry baby? Why are we so angry? Mm. Yeah, goldfish makes everything better, doesn't it? 
He's so funny. Oh. Mom's making a bottle to bring down right now, I promise. I'm just gonna go ahead and block here, because my 1-1's never getting through on the ground. Yeah, I want to switch to a more generic bot at some point, because MTG bot's annoying and it clashes. So we don't get to guarantee it, but we can't do all three next turn. And look, there's a pretty low chance that we draw the action this turn, so I think it was worth the risk of not getting both of them on the same thing. Ooh, and look at that. Now that we got this into play, we even get to Starcaller Ancient, too. And, huh, I might put the shields on and play. Yeah, I'm going to put the shields on and play this out here. He might hit this with counter magic, but... Yeah, okay, that's really sweet. So, hopefully we draw that Prophecy to action that draws a card next turn, and then we get two of them, and then we just, like, bury our opponent. And this, this draws a card, so we've got two draws towards the Prophecy to action. Yeah, so if he just passes back here, he's just going to get ranched if we can find that thing. Oh, jeez. That... That's what you could call, that's what you could call the stones right there, ladies and germs. That's the best. This, each of these draw a card, and it's split, and then when these hit our opponent, they come back to our hand. Oh, jeez. It's like Christmas. Someone else was, we were talking about this deck yesterday, and they said, they said they cut the combat trainings, and I was like, no, the two combat trainings have such super high upside, and this is, this is that super high upside right now. It's just, just like, throwing up all over the place. It's so gross. All right, now we're going to attack here. And we've got two verdicts up, so we can beat Lullaby plus Counter Magic here. If we couldn't beat Lullaby and Counter Magic, I wouldn't attack all of my troops in here. Because I need to get some of these combat trainings back. No. Stop it. No. Stop it. Opponent concedes. I would concede too. He's very dead. Scale of one to dead. Very, very dead. We're just going to draw like eight cards next turn. We get four combat trainings back to our hand that turn to eight combat trainings and eight draws. Oh, oh baby, the value. All right. I'm going to run my smallest. This is basically a blue red counter burn deck. Yep. Uh, the, we actually, we're actually more of like a, just a straight burn deck game one. I call it Prophecy Burn. We've got some counters on the board. I actually want to add some more counters into, into the reserves next time we finish calling. We're 3-1 now, so we'll probably finish this tonight. Uh, I'm going to run my old, my youngest upstairs and put a bottle in his mouth. My wife's going to put him down for bed here in a minute. So I'll be right back and then we're going to play some more matches. Thanks for hanging out, folks. Sorry for the short break right after we started, but it'll just be like two minutes stops. Be right back. All right, toddler. All right, toddler. Say bye-bye, internet. I'm a little baby.
like a be right back icon on stream. Ugh. Hex is a free game. Ugh. It's similar to what well, most of the digital CCGs use a similar model. Um, the main difference between Hex and things like Hearthstone and a lot of the other ones is that Hex is a trading card game in addition to being a collectible card game. So, like, you can buy, sell, and trade cards. The Hex Primal site that's advertised at the top, you can buy cards from for cash. You can also just get a free account. You get a, you get free cards when you sign up with your account. You can play the, the in-game Frost Arena um, and the campaign to grind currency. Um, this is really quickly becoming an established deck. Uh, I started streaming with it last week, and a bunch of people have told me they've bought into it since then and been putting up good results. I won't say knob gobblers. <laughs> this is actually only my second gauntlet with it, but I was looking on Hexmen, and a lot of people have results with it already. The deck, the more I played, like, I put this deck together, people kept asking me to play this champion, this McBombish champion, and I was like, well, let's just build it from scratch, like, not thinking about all the other cards that people are known to play, and I just threw it together with all the cards that I wanted to play, and it's been doing really well. Yeah, I guess it, it is, it's like, what, like $70? R Rage Fires are not cheap, this card's like 8 bucks a pop, and, uh, Thunderfield, or Stargazers, I think, are like 7 or 8 as well, so, I guess it's, it's, yeah, I guess it is more on the, one of the, the more cheap side. Uh, what do I want to do here? So I could play Thunderfield Seer out here, or I could Crackling Bolt my opponent. The upside to Crackling Bolting my opponent is that it lets me activate my charge power this turn. It's also more resource efficient. But I kind of want to see if the Crackling Bolt in case he plays a troop out next turn that we can Crackling Bolt. So the Thunderfield Seer, for those that are new to Hex in general, um, the little animation that he puts towards the top of my deck, when he comes into play, he has the Prophecy mechanic, so he adds a line of text to the top action in my deck. I mean, the the Boris Blast Forge deck is also fairly cheap. It's like 105, all things considered. So my opponent appears to be playing... Uh, so my opponent's champion gains a threshold of his choice for four, so basically it's a, usually a five-color deck. Get that. A Rage Fire that we can't cast that draws two cards. I'm going to go ahead and ship with my Thunderfield Seers here. Now I have a choice between playing Thunderfield Elder and playing Lanupaw's Sight. If my opponent has Elixil next turn, which is a 3-3 three, three that can become indestructible, he's going to be able to block the Elder anyway. So I think I'm actually going to cast the Lanupaw's Sight, because the Lanupaw's Sight makes it more likely that I'm going to... Oh, and I, I made a mistake here. So I missed a point of damage. If I was playing Lanupaw's Sight, I should have um, done it pre-combat, so I could activate my champion power and create this Bumble lot. That was, that was a small mistake on my part. So my opponent played their fourth shard, which helps him activate his champion's ability to gain a threshold of his choice. So a small mistake on my part there. I missed a, missed a point of damage. Forgotten Monarch Flight and 2-2. Two, two. When it deals damage to an opposing champion, his troops get 1-1. One, one. It has Flight. Sure. So hopefully we draw a Ruby Shard to Rage Fire this guy down. Rage Fire is a really neat mechanic. It says Escalation and it deals 2 damage to something, and then all the Rage Fires in my hand and deck gain 2 extra damage, and this puts itself back into my deck. So once I cast one of these Rage Fires, the other one will then deal 4 damage. Alright, we didn't hit a Ruby Shard. Huh. That's a tough choice. I'm going to play Starcaller Ancient and try and hit a Shard, and we did hit a Shard, which is sweet. So, because this card adds a line of text, draw a card to it from my Lanupaw's site, so now we'll play my Sapphire Shard out here, which unfortunately doesn't give us a second Ruby Threshold for these Rage Fires, but it does let us play this Crackling Bolt. Kill, sure. So this card, whenever we draw something that's prophesized, it doubles it. So unfortunately we didn't draw any prophesized things while it was out. Hopefully our opponent doesn't survive this game at 1, since we missed a point of damage. Uh, worth noting that we did hit that second Ruby Shard there, so we're going to be able to play out this Rage Fire next turn, and this Thunderfield Elder. Thunderfield Elder, so this deck we're playing is basically a Prophecy deck. Um, this Thunderfield Elder has prophesized the next action in our deck when he gets when you play this, copy it. So we'll play him out next turn, and then we'll probably Rage Fire his Dome if he doesn't play a troop for us to Rage Fire.
Midnight Shepherd put a troop from a crypt into play under his control. So we're going to want to rage fire that, otherwise he can just bring his guys back. So we're going to go shard Elder Rage Fire next turn. He gets his action. This thing will draw us two cards thanks to the Thunderfield Seers we played earlier. And look at this. When you play this draw card, when you play this, copy it. Activate our champion power. Get in for four points of damages. Opponent goes to 13, and we've got seven power on the table. We've got a Rage Fire that does four in our hand. Uh, it's not really a great choice currently. The format the format's changed a lot since then, and actually they're supposed to be updating. I just sent an email today. They were supposed to have updated it already, that section of my article, to show show different deck lists. So let's start by playing Arcane Focus, which draws a card when we play it, and then it activates twice. Zegamot's like, well, game's actually not that good. I'm actually just going to take a shard. we got plenty of shards, but we really don't want a Zegamot's like, game. I also have Arcane Focus here, and we'll take another Rage Fire. Um. Oh, and this is the Rage Fire we prophesized earlier, so this is going to draw two cards when we play it. So I'm going to Rage Fire his guy for four here, which will draw us two cards. Varanus with the host. Welcome, folks. Thank you for that. Going to blast his guy, draw two cards. And so the escalation mechanic, when after, in addition to making it deal more damage, it also puts itself back into the deck, which is great. So it looks like we're mostly running away with this game. I pr should I should technically play that post combat, but it probably doesn't matter. We're hitting him for seven down to ten, and then between this and then this does six now because it's the third rage fire, and then crackling bolt does three. So he's dead between the board and our hand next turn. His deck does play copies of the card called Extinction, which is a four cost destroy all troops. So he could get us with that here, but we're still in a pretty good spot. Pengu power with the three month resub. Thank you for the continued support, mate. I do appreciate it. So this card is a 3-4 Life Drain Flight Steadfast, and he can shift these things off and basically transfer its powers to another troop. But thankfully we have this Rage Fire to just mow through this this rather large character. Um, play that. Rage Fire this dork. Goes back into our deck. So the next Rage Fire is going to deal a whopping 8. But this should be lethal, right? Yep, just concedes. So, Zygomot's game is not great in this matchup. Um, they don't have a ton of things, or untargetable things that we can target. Transmogrifade is great. This match is basically the matchup for Transmogrifade. This card uh, reverts the trans troop and transforms it into something slightly worse at random. Generally, generally worse. What's the shortcut for attack all? Uh, I'm not sure what the default is. I have mine bound to A. It's F4 is the default. If you click into your options and your settings and battle, you can customize your hotkeys like I have here. Uh, burn, burn's medium. We do have to kill his, yeah, I guess we have to kill Midnight Shepherd and we have to kill the Choo Choo Life Drain. So I guess we'll, we'll bring in the burns as well. Or I could see Oracle Song and, uh, Verdict both being reasonable choices, but I don't think I want either of those over other cards we have in the deck right now. Go ahead and save this. I'm really looking forward to the next the next update. Not only the ladder that rolls out, but the, a lot of the little changes that they had shown on the, the test server looked really great. I'm excited to get my hands on them. Oh, yep. Yeah, I'm a, I, I come from a computer science background, so like I, I always just like click through things when that's the first thing I do when I get a piece of software, just click around a bunch. This hand's not great. I'm not a fan of mulliganing though. It's got all of our colors. I might keep it. It's got it's got it's got two ruby shards and a sapphire shard. We're on the draw. That must be from last last game. 
they have seven cards in their opener here. Hex Invitational 2016 sleeves. Hope everyone's doing all right here tonight. Site stream's not going to be terribly long. So this is uh, impromptu extra slash bonus stream. Normally my stream times are during the day. Tomorrow afternoon is my one of my longer hex streams. I start about noonish central time and play for at least five hours or so. If you give me a follow on Twitch or Twitter, you will get notifications on those services when I go live. I think I'm just gonna rage fire his dome. Now I'm gonna crackling bolt his dome because crackling bolt again gives us a charge which allows us to activate Mr. McBombus. Get in there. That's why we're playing two Crackling Wits in this deck as well, just like maximum amount of turn two Bs. Let me get to combat training this guy up next turn and go to town. Won't you take me to combat town? Won't you take me to combat town? This guy dies to Rage Fire. This guy dies to Rage Fire. Bum, 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 bum. Bum 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 Rage fire Gonna blast your mana and give my guy I had an account since beta but didn't receive anniversary sleeves that's something I kinda came for I believe they only gave sleeves to players that were active during the times when the sleeves were being given out I don't think they just gave them to everyone that had an account I could be wrong on that though if you're if there's a question about something you think you should have gotten that you didn't, you should definitely I think it's support.hexcc.com. I could be wrong on that, but I think that's support support channel. Opponent has all five thresholds now. Plays a midnight shepherd. We're definitely crackling bolt that. As we're logging in during those periods. Yeah, that's what I thought, Pentachills. Good. I remembered remembered correctly. FRS19 with the brand new sub. Thank you for that, mate. I can I appreciate that next level of extra support. You get some some sweet emotes there, and I appreciate it. I stream because I love doing it, but subs definitely help me do it uh, do it more often. It's easier to pitch this to the wife as a job if it makes some money. So I appreciate that, mate. Thank you. Activate McBombus. Go ahead and combat training up this other Bumblebot. You always want to spread out your combat trainings whenever possible because the combat training as the line of text when this deals combat damage, deal um, return combat trainings from your crypt to your hand. Okay, so he's burning. He's burning that Bumblebot. I haven't seen burn under that deck before. That's interesting. So, like, if we would have put this on the other Bumblebot, we wouldn't be getting our combat training back now because he killed that one. But now the combat training train keeps on going. Right on into Funky Town. I guess Burn makes sense. I don't particularly like Extinction against decks like the one I'm playing. So, honestly, I don't know what beats this deck. I keep I keep playing against different things and just like like randomly randomly killing them. I think I think this might be the best. I think this deck might be better than the Boris deck. That might that might be heresy to say, but. I, I feel like I have to transmogrify this guy because this lets him put troops from crypts back into play under his control. I turned it into a cosmic totem, put target champion script into a second target champion stack. Alright, combat trading this guy up. Oh yeah, we have a value town emote. I forgot about that because I hum I do hum the value town song a lot. If he has a burn here, he gets to break up the combat training, and we would be in trouble except we've got this this Vandable Lanupal site, which is three draws in the bank. Oh, he put my crypt back into his deck. That's funny. Because it took the combat training out of it. Okay, good good line. Good play, opponent. And I guess my sequencing there was technically suboptimal. That was, that was a good line off of the things I transmogrified his guy into. All right, so Lixel gives him a threshold. If he has a... Um, what is that card called? I'm blanking on its name. If he has a Thingamahoozits next turn, we could be in trouble. And by Thingamahoozits, I mean... Uh, whatever that card is called. Oh, I'm so blanking on its name. Uh, High Infinite Tricks. <laughs> How's it going, Betty? 
You're the best. All right, so you have Rage Fire. It's gonna crack him for three here. The question is, do I want to Rage Fire his dome? I think I do, because Rage Fires are then lethal, and that puts extra Rage Fire into my deck. If he has Infinite Tricks as one of his last two cards here, we're actually Extinction. Okay, so this destroys all troops, but his troop is invincible, so it does not die. He's at five, so Rage Fire off the top grabs him. This is the new magic online that Watsi keeps talking about making. That's that's really unfortunate. And unfortunately, actually, what's really unfortunate is maybe I should have saved the Rage Fire last turn because activating my champion power requires me to play an action th in the turn, and I, so I can't activate this even though I have the required charges to do so. So it's very possible that playing out the Rage Fire last turn was a mistake. Yeah, I think the percentage play is r incorrect on that. And I shouldn't have played it out. All right, well, Starcrawler Ancient, and he probably can't be attacking into this. Because this is two power and he's only at five life. I guess he could have, like, a kill or a burn in his hand. If he attacks, I'm assuming he has removal or a blocker. If he has removal, he should kill this ASAP, so that way, because I have prophecy cards in my deck still. Sure, he just has a blocker. Come on. In a second. Okay, sure. We actually need to hit hit a way to close this game out ASAP. Look at that. Prophesized burns. Yep. So and this one draws a card. That's great. Yep. So he's just dead actually, right? Oh, this this deck's so good. You know, I stream tonight, Maddie, because I'm not I'm not gonna be on for too long. Maybe just like another half hour or so. I got some stuff I want to get done, but I also wanted to play play some hex, so I figured I might as well fire up the stream while I was while I was gone. Oh, Monarch could block. That's funny. <laughs> Maybe he was ghosting and he heard me say he was dead and conceded. That would be funny, right? How good would that be? Maybe I'll go till you get home then, Maddie. And I can give you a host. That seems like a reasonable plan. Go for an hour. 11.30 is not too bad. Jake took a late nap today, so he's probably going to be up a little bit late. Another Uzu deck. Uzu could be a couple different things. Could be the deck like my the last one I was playing. Could be Uzu Cannon. Could be a Brew. Uh, this hand seems, seems pretty reasonable. <laughs> Alright, so Blood, Sapphire, Short on 1 probably means our opponent's playing Elixir deck similar to what my last opponent was, but again, could still be a Brew. Uh, yep, we're going to play Shard of Innovation here. This hand's a little clunky because it doesn't have a Sapphire Shard that makes a temporary resource, so... Again, if you're new to Hex, the dual shard I just plays has me choose between the two thresholds, and it doesn't give me a resource this turn, so that's why it's a zero one. one So I'll have that permanent resource for next turn, but I don't get to use it this turn. So that's kind of the drawback to playing the, the dual shards that help fix your, fix your colors a little bit. And then the question becomes, do I just Starcaller Ancient next turn, or do I Thunderfield Seer? The Starcaller Ancient Lanupaw Sight Curve is really powerful, so I think I'm just going to do that and hoping... 
Yeah, we just hit a shard this turn. So I'm just going to play this. I'm going to play the Starcaller Ancient out. Hopefully our opponent can't kill it for a couple of turns. And then anytime Starcaller Ancient starts doubling cards off of Lanupa's site, the game just ends super quick. Transmog. Okay. So your turn. This gets a seed counter. And you can see here in the upper left-hand corner, this was transformed from the Starcaller Ancient. So this gets a seed counter every turn. And then if there are three or more seed counters, remove them and transform it into a random plant. So we got a random plant inbound. How is the $30 budget? Uh, it's very reasonable, and it transitions up into something like what I'm playing right now pretty... Like some of the... There's overlap in between the the cards that cost money in that deck and the cards that cost money in this deck. So, one thing that's kind of annoying to me, and this is nothing this is nothing personal against you, Ankh Gaming, is that something that players in Hex do a lot that really annoys me is they associate um, all champions as being the same decks. And while the... Look at, look at this beauty. When you play it, draw a card, draw a card twice from these guys. Just, like, kill your guy, draw three cards, casual... Anywho, back to my rant. Um, just because a deck uses the same champion, even a similar archetype, doesn't make them functionally the same deck. And while there are definitely Bombus configurations that cost sub ten dollars, they do have a different power level than some of the cards are different. They attack. I don't even know if it's strictly power level is the right word I would say, but they attack the format differently than you know what that thirty dollar build does or what uh, this prophecy build that I have does. Just like this prophecy. McBombus deck is it has some very base func functional differences than the um, the Phoenix builds. Extinction to kill all of my troops. That's sad. I liked my troops opponent. That's so rude. So opponent definitely on the Lixel build with Extinction in their deck. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and play this. I guess that was that was uh, clicking a little too quickly. I should have Arcane Focus before I committed to playing a resource there. Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to take another focus. I don't really like a lot of the other cards in my hand. And actually, I'm just going to rage fire his dome here and then focus again. That puts the rage fire back in my deck because I wouldn't mind finding another rage fire with this. Uh, I'm going to take Thunderfield Elder. And then I have three charges and cast an action this turn. So let's go ahead and activate this. Rage fire and star caller are the cards that cost money. Uh, Ziggy's game costs a little bit, I think. I 5 x uh... Infinite Tricks would be annoying, but not the end of the world since we have Ziggy's game here. Their Midnight Paladin is kind of annoying. Another question is, do I want to flip a coin? Okay, yeah, I have two Zig games now. So Ziggamot's game destroys a trooper artifact at random, so I'm going to flip a coin, hopefully killing my opponent's card. When it kills my own thing, it comes back to my hand at least, so we get to recast and get our thing. We did lose our Brumblebot, though. I'm probably supposed to attack first there before playing the Ziggamot's game, because I have the chance. Yeah, so I just missed a point of damage. I definitely should have attacked with my Bumblebot, because I didn't have anything that could affect combat in my hand, so even if it lived, my combat subslot would have just been attack for one. So I should have attacked for one and then gamed, because then if I kill my own guy, it matters less. So Lixel, this guy again, is invincible, because my opponent has all five thresholds. If he has high infinite tricks, we're probably going to lose this game. Ooh, that's pretty good. When you play this, copy it. So this is the three cost draw three, and it copies itself when we play it thanks to Thunderfield Elder. So we've got six draws in the bank here, so maybe we can beat a high infinite tricks. You just 
You just gotta believe. Crackling Wit gains us a charge and draws us a card. And look at that. This is a resource that's gonna draw us two cards when we play it next turn. Um, I'm actually gonna leave this Bumblebot back on D, and I'm doing this intentionally. I'm not just clicking through it. Um, because my opponent has high infinite tricks and he plays it and shifts a whole bunch of stuff over to the slick tool, it'll include flying, and then I want to be able to block with the fumble bot and preserve my life total. It's possible I'm supposed to. All right, yep. It's possible I'm just supposed to fire off this crackling bolt last turn. Hopefully we draw into a bunch of rage fires here. That would be that would be the dream. I have a dream, and it is a bunch of rage fires. All right, let's start by playing the resource that draws us two cards. That, that's unfortunate. Um, hmm. I, I mean, I guess that's, that's technically good, right? Because, like, it, it comes back to my hand and we get to draw a bunch of cards. Yeah, I'm just going to pass the turn here. So this is a card I've been hinting at that's very bad for us. It gives his guy, he's going to be able to shift flying and life drain over to his guy. So this is going to become a 5-5 five five with life drain that gets in here. Is there a world where we get out of this? I think it involves drawing a bunch of... Alright, so let us begin. Okay, so let's kill this. Let's play a resource. Let's activate this. Let's play Thunderfield Elder, which draws some cards when it comes out. And then it prophesizes. Let's play Combat Training, which draws some cards when we play it. Alright, when you play this, copy it. And that's the start. Um... I'm going to go ahead and attack with this Bumblebot here. Which brings our combat training back to our hand that draws us two cards. And I think it involves playing the Star Caller Ancient and then hoping our opponent... Um, hoping our opponent doesn't have another extinction next turn to force through lethal. If our opponent has an extinction, we just can't do anything. But if he doesn't have an extinction, we could burn him out here. I guess another high infinite trick does it too because it gives a flying. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Should have star colored first. Uh, I drew this off of off of this. Yeah, so we are we are unfortunately just dead. I really wish I could run off, and it's possible maybe. No, nah, I needed to draw the two extra cards from the combat training. No, this thing wasn't flying yet. He had to draw. He had to play a second infinite tricks here. We are dead to the second infinite tricks, but. Start again here. I think I want to go to four transmogs in the reserves in this deck, but we'll see. So again, Zygamot's game just poop soup in this matchup. The deck our opponent's playing is getting more popular, so maybe I want to... I think I want more transmogs for that reason. Just bring in the extra burn like we did last time and call it a day. A little over 100 people hanging out for the late night hex. Thanks for stopping by. If it's your first time by the stream, welcome. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a professional gamer here on this channel. We stream a bunch of different TCGs. Hex is the primary thing that I stream, but I also uh, play a lot of Magic the Gathering and Paper. We stream Paper Magic occasionally on this channel. We do some Magic Online, but there's going to be a whole lot less of that because Magic Online is poop. Um, might uh, dabble in some other games when they come out. The Gwent Gwent seems like it's gotten some favorable reviews when that comes out of beta and we're allowed to stream it. We might do that. Might try Eternal when we're allowed to stream that. So, But we're going to stream, stream Hex two days a week here at minimum, plus random extra streams like this one. I saved, right? 
Yeah, opponent must be taking a while. These burns are a little suspect in this matchup. It's very possible I want the verdicts. The extinctions have been good against us a couple of times when we go really wide. Definitely play first. Just needed like one more turn that last game, I think. Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty reasonable. Again, we get to, I love, I love just the, the Bombus on two hands. We get to do it off a of Crackling Wit, so we're fairly likely to hit another shard. I might actually add a shard to this deck. Um, I think, I think we're one to two shards of where I, light from where I want to be. Having extra cantrips like Crackling Wit definitely helps, but like, the main deck burns could probably go. I think I want to get to at least 23 shards, possibly 24. Hey, Kane's Lance. I'm life is swell. So crackling white cantrips and let's just activate this. Ooh, and then we have Starcaller Ancient Landing Paw Sight combo going on soon. So I think for the sake of being resource efficient, I'm gonna Landing Paw Sight next turn, and then uh, that means we're gonna miss doubling the first thing we draw, but we should double subsequent things after that. Plus, opponent often has a uh, verdict of the Ancient Kings in their deck post reserves, uh, so I want to make sure this resolves. There could be an argument for going Starcaller Ancient plus combat training this turn, but again, I think I just really want to make sure this card resolves. It's possible to play this game reliably and free to play. You, it is completely free to play. Um, you, to get the competitive decks like I am playing, you will have to grind a significant amount, but that's all the free to play games. You have to play them to to get the things in them for free if you don't want to throw money at them. The difference in Hex and the other games is that instead of buying random booster packs in Hex, which you can do if you're lucky, uh, you can just buy cards directly, which is nice. I'm not sure what Festering Decay does. His Lixel actually isn't invincible right now, so I might... I might just crackling bolt it. Shard. Huh. That's a tough call. Yeah, I'm actually just gonna kill his Lixel. He probably just has another Lixel in his hand and that's why he's exposing this, but we'll just crackling bolt plus combat training here. It means we are possibly losing more value on the Lanupa site not getting doubled by Starcaller Ancient, but taking Elixir off the table early is pretty high upside. Plus, we're still going to be resource efficient this turn with the combat training, so. Yep, yeah, it has a second Lexel. So maybe I'm supposed to like play the Starcaller Ancient out there because the only reason he's exposed the first Lexel to removal is because he has a second, but. I guess that's a close call. Um, let's play the Starcaller Ancient out here. And this combat training draws a card, so hopefully we get that one back. And that resource doubles up because we have Starcaller Ancient in play. Maybe he has a burn or a transmogrophate he's thinking about playing here. Oh, I messed up. Sloppy slops. Uh, I didn't play a resource yet this turn, and I'm at two charges, so if I had played a resource, I could have um, Lux Sack. Sacrifice it and possibly get a lucky effect. So he transmogged my guy into a random thing. There are links to the my deck list on Hex Meta below the stream. I five something with this very recently, so it should be up there. If you're on mobile, it's off to the right side. You pull it out. Uh, you can get a second blood, so you can. He, he should extinction just to kill the star color ancient, probably. Yeah. Star color ancient represents a lot of drawn cards. It already doubled it doubled up one thing for us, so we got our value out of it. Lead on Crackling Wit here, see what we get. Get another shard. Uh, activate this. We'll put combat training on this, and then it'll get the other combat training from our discard pile back to a... 
Rewarded for bad play. Yeah, kind of. We have the other Bumblebot to deal damage now, and we get both our combat trainings back. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play Thunderfield Elder here, and then play this shard. It doesn't make a temporary resource, but draws a card. Again, this deck just, it just never runs out of cards in hand. Attacks. That's good for us. All right. Well, I'm gonna play this combat training. That actually, I'm gonna start by playing a Thunderfield Elder. Might as well get that action that doubles on there. Let's combat training this dork. Draw a card when we play it. Wing for three. Uh, we're not playing any timer pulls. Just just reach pretty much. Gale Force. That's rough. I'm glad that's the reason why I didn't play out the second combat training because I kind of wanted to make sure that uh... oh jeez so Luxac this is something he transmogged my guy into has a random lucky or unlucky effect and the lucky effect was killing his Lixel get wreck nerd get wreck But what, what a lot of what I don't understand is like, I've played the free to play aspects of a lot of games. And I've played the free to play aspects of this, and like people are acting like it's a chore. Like it's it's a it's part of the game. You get you can have fun playing the Frost Arena. My wife and I both spent several hours on the Frost Arena. Games are fun, damn it. Alright, so we're gonna crackling bull this dork. Activate this. Combat training this guy up. Ship with the squad. Get both our combat trainings back from the crypt. Play the combat training that draws a card, see what we get. Ooh, stock holla ancient. And we've got an action coming up here that's gonna be doubled twice. It's gonna be doubled from this and doubled doubled from this, so it'll happen three times. This enters play, deals damage, life drain. That's pretty good. So this does five dust and it gains him five life. Hopefully the prophecy card is not on top of our deck, because I'd like to st ah, that sucks. Can you play this, copy it. All right, well, let's play. It's dark color range. I would have liked two of these super burns. So this burn, this burn's gonna copy itself twice here, so it's gonna do six all together and draw three cards, casual. Yeah, I technically missed a point of damage with slops because of this crackling bolt, but whatever. Activate my Bumbly Bot. Train him up. Arcane Focus, see what we get. Grab another Star Caller Ancient for backups. Actually, you know what? I don't think I have any prophecies in the bank. Maybe I should have. Yeah, I probably should have uh, grabbed the guy that makes prophecies there. Anyway, right, let's replay this combat training that draws a card. And then we're just going to pass the turn. I could have played the Crackling Bolt out here. We've got enough resources that we can just bend one of them. It's like casual seven cards in our hand on turn 80, halfway through our deck. We've got Extinction, and we still have a game. Midnight Paladin. Okay, we technically still have a game now because he has Midnight Paladin draws that just kill us. Because this card does damage to your opponent equal to the amount of charges that you have when it comes into play. Or the amount of thresholds that you have, so just did five DOS. We kill that. We combat training this. Is he dead? This is eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty. Yeah, he's just dead. Okay. Dirt. 
Do I want Verdict of the Ancient Kings? I feel like that's a real question. The burn seem like a solid medium in this matchup. I'm gonna cut at least one and bring in a Verdict. Eh, let's, let's do one. Let's give it a try. This hand's a solid medium. Uh, no, no ruby shards, but like arcane focuses can propel us into those. Starcaller Ancient Thunderfield Elder Curve is not the worst. Look at that. Have to take Ruby Shard even if we didn't want it. Starcaller Ancient out here. Anytime Starcaller Ancient doubles what Thunderfield Elder did, it's just nuts. He has a transmog, that's fine. Ooh, that's a good one. So at the start of our turn, this creates two Ancestral Spectres and puts them into our deck, which is a 2-2 with Flight that draws a card. It's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. I don't really care about that. Now the question is, do I... Elder next turn or look for a... S okay, so play this. I don't think I really care about this card. Yeah, I'm just going to Elder pass the turn. He's going to get to hit me with this and make all of his guys be 1-1 one, one bigger, but I don't think I'm really... I mean, I would have preferred a Starcaller Ancient, but this also isn't bad. So that's why Transmog is not an actual removal spell. It's a... So it's a roll the roll the dice. I have Lixel print damage we dealt to this from cards that's your threshold you have, okay? So basically we can't deal damage to this. Multiple eyes of Lixel. Okay, now I kind of care that they're gonna get all gonna get bigger. So I'm not gonna arcane focus here because something that's a little bit awkward with uh, this interaction is that um, this says you have to draw the prophesized card for it to double and this doesn't technically draw the card, it puts it into your hand, which sounds the same, but it's not. Which means if we see the card that gets doubled from this, we'd wanna take it with this, but we also just wanna draw it naturally so the, the card that doubles gets doubled by Starcaller Ancient, so we get four times its effect. If he attacks with this, we're transmogging it, I think. He's definitely gonna attack with it. Maybe I should have transmogged on our turn so we could have made a blocker. That's probably correct. But I kinda want him to attack with it and then transmog. He might ship with the team, yeah, thinking he can just win the race. So let's do this. I guess if we had Verdict of the Ancient Kings here, we're actually in a lot of trouble. Wow, yeah, that's rough. Um, yeah, we're just going to take our hit for 7 here and chump next turn, I think. Yeah, if this hit Rage Fire and we draw it, he's basically just dead. God, that's really unfortunate. Um... I'm gonna wait off one more turn on this arcane focus. And I'm gonna rage fire his dome and then make a bumble bot to block so he stops growing his team at least.
Make it immune to transmog. Uh, this isn't the card that's invincible, and the invincible card can be transmogged. Transmog reverts it and transforms it. It's not destroying it. So his invincible card is Lixel, and it can be transmogged. So I think... The real question here is, am I chumping everything? I'm definitely blocking the guy that pumps the team. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just committed to chumping. If I, if I wasn't chumping, I should have attacked. Is is the logic here? Hopefully, we hit our, our hit our spell that got double. We need to draw that action that's prophesized this turn. That's really unfortunate. Now we have to hit it or just at next turn. God, that's really unfortunate. And now we're gonna see it. We just got oh oh well not yet I guess. There's one of those specters that we saw. Draw the action. Draw the action. Draw the action. Draw the action. God bless America. That's really unfortunate. Um, I can get away with just blocking two of his things again. And, like, hopefully he bricks, and then hopefully we find that action after seeing a bunch of cards. If your goal is constructed and you don't want to spend time playing the PvE, yes, you will have to buy cards. Good top decks. That's really unfortunate. Uh, I want to say we didn't make any mistakes in that game. I mean, there were a lot of decisions, so I'm sure we made a couple of really small mistakes, but... There wasn't anything super critical that jumped out at me. We just, like, we hit shards three turns in a row, and we just we needed to hit... And that action, any action in the deck that would have gotten copied four times probably would have been reasonable. This hand's a solid medium. I'm going to keep it. It's better on the draw. I'd like to see another card before I commit to what I'm doing with this. You can get away with less than 52. Like, the, the Yoltul burn deck on my budget hex decks page um, is like 6 bucks, and it's pretty reasonable. I've actually lost matches to it. Uh, we ha Hex only has four sets currently. We haven't had... I don't think we've had official word on rotation, but the like the word on the street is set seven. The first rotation will happen, which is approximately a year from now if, they're, if their set releases stay on track. And I, I will note that these aren't lists that I've made specifically. They are um, deck lists that have done well in other Hex events. Uh, 60 Basic Islands is the Legacy Legal deck that's fairly cheap. Probably going to Ziggamot's game here. Unless we draw a ruby shard. Or or that works too. Having a bunch of rage fires that we can't cast in our hand right now is a little awkward to start, but these do two, then four, then six. So this is actually twelve points worth of damage if we hit uh if we hit a ruby shard here sometime soon. Oracle Song is interesting. I think that's just worse than Sight, but... Ruby Shard, Dual Shard... Ruby Shad, Dual Shad. 
God bless you. So we're just going to get these rage fires back into our deck. Take the shotgun, send it upstairs, send the message. That's what this game's about right here. This game's about rage fires. To the dome. We get in here for four. Now that we hit that shard, this game should just roll right off. He's down to 14, and we've got four, 10, 12 points of reach in our hand, plus a two power flyer with combat training. Extinction's not bad for him. Line of Paw Sight. Don't mind if I do. Another Lixel. Hmm. Probably in a Zygomot's game this. He gets one threshold from this. Unless he has another thing. Nope. Okay. So we're going to burn this guy and then Zygomots came to kill the other one. So burn this guy. Zygomots game. Play Thunderfields here that draws a card. This draws two cards since it was prophesized. We don't have another. Do not have another resource though. Um, he only had three colors when he played the Lixel. So he could he had his fourth color when he played the Lixel. High infinite trick, sure. So Ragefire is gonna have to eat this one up. This is a 3-4 life drain said fast flight. Just all sorts of nasty. The real question is, I bricked on shards, so am I greedy and play the crackling wit and hope to hit a shard in two cards? I feel like the answer is I'm always greedy. And we're gonna get punished here. Yep, just instantly punished. Um Well, we'll pass the turn now, I suppose. I think we're we're a favorite to hit a shard in two draws with 20 shards and 46 cards. I think we're a favorite to do that. Now we're going to get a little ranched. And taking the line I took there was definitely greedy. There's no way around that. So we take 5 here. He gains 3. Now supreme punishment would be if he has a third lick soul to start shifting the high infinite tricks on. Alright, sweet. God bless him. Shard. Kill this one. Oh, wait. Wait. That didn't do as much. God. Ugh. <sighs> that only did four damage. And I had it, and it would have killed it last turn, but it got bigger. And I'm a big dumb stupid. Let's play this, and I hope we kill something, I guess. That's not my own thing. <sighs> well, all of that just went far worse than anticipated. And by anticipated, I mean I'm an idiot, so it didn't go well. The good news is combat training plus rage fire kills both of these guys next turn, and then we've got a handful of goodies left over. Please don't play another troop. Sweet. Sweet. So, alrighty, just game game. Maybe I'm supposed to just game game here. That's probably correct. It's less resource efficient though. I'm probably not supposed to be worried about that at this point. Well, at least he waited a turn to draw this. If he would have still had the high infinite tricks out when he drew this, we would not be able to win this game in a million years. 
But now, now maybe there's a chance. That's all I need is a chance, really. That's uh, another rage fire. This does eight now. We found a shard that draws a card. Activate this. Play this. Draw a card. Yeah, let's just send a message. He's dead to one more rage fire. God, how good would it be if we win this game, even though I'm an idiot? If there's justice in the world, we don't win this game. If there's if there's any amount of justice in this world, we lose this game. Not only was I greedy, but I was stupid and did not did not take in the battlefield. Now it's just clicking. It's so easy to just click in games like this, especially when I'm like reading a chat too and like taking in everything that's going on. It can be difficult to cover everything here. It's also late. It's after eleven o'clock here. Rage fire. Two looks at a rage fire. Daddy needs a rage fire. That's all I need. Underfield elder, double stuff up. Play this shard. The escalation mechanic is OP when you see a lot of cards like this deck does. So normally you have to like redraw those cards. It can be difficult to get back to them again, obviously, but if you can just like draw them again almost instantaneously like this deck often does, it's pretty great. Okay, looking like there might be justice. Looking like there might be justice. Till we draw rage fire this turn and kill him. Draw rage fire, kill you. Kill this guy. And I can't Ziggamot scheme this because it's indestructible. Play Thunderfield. Play this. Uh, I'm not going to attack him for one here. Because uh, if he has kill for this, I want to be able to chump block with my Bumblebot. He likely just has another extinction. He's only played one of those, right? I just played two. What's the best version of Scape Shift to play? Look at the deck that I played at the Open in Indianapolis. Top 32 with it. I'm going to block with Bumblebot here. Also, I just want to block with this server three power guy to crack back with. Rage fire or focus? Rage fire or focus? That'll do, pig. Probably. Oh, geez, look, we're one point short. I definitely missed a point of damage this game somewhere. Probably multiple times, in fact. You watch him just have a kill. I shouldn't have played. That was another another sloppy mistake. Transmog. Yep. Just shouldn't have. Shouldn't have played. Uh, shouldn't have played the second combat training there. God, it's so, such slop. I apologize. So yeah. So, if even one of these combat trainings hits, um. Your guy with combat training hits your opponent, all the combat trainings come back. So, because this last one wasn't lethal, I shouldn't have exposed myself to allowing him to have a removal spell like that. And, uh, basically blowing out all of the combat trainings there. We did, Bardic. We're going to start next Wednesday, in fact. Week from the night. Ooh. Tomorrow afternoon is Hex. And then the Saturday stream will be my last time streaming Magic Online for the foreseeable future. Thursday is always Hex Day. Good thing this is only game one. We're going to try and play better. And then Maddie's going to be signing on to stream, so... Please, please, merciful God, that I don't deserve Rage Fire or Focus into Rage Fire. All right, well, this could kill this. Midnight Shepherd. Oh, lost the coin flip. All right, we're dead. How's the match against the Boris Rocket deck? I've beaten it the three times, two times I've played it. All right, and again, I'm just going to put four Transmogrifades in this deck. Well, this Lixel deck's been getting so much more popular. And I don't know if I love Burn in this matchup. I keep waffling on that. 
You want Oracle Song? Let's just do an Oracle Song in two burns. Let's do it that way. Do it live. Hashtag YOLO, no scope, 360, all that jazz. Is Curse of Oblivion. I don't think Curse of Oblivion is a very good card. Surgical Extraction type effects where you like take all the cards of a certain name out of their deck are card disadvantage. The Lixel deck is a solid medium. I don't know, like that game I like went completely brain dead and got unlucky at the same time and we still almost won. I like threw a rage fire away. Yeah, we don't need to... The, the infinite tricks on its own isn't a big deal. We have transmogs and rage fires and, and uh, other stuff to kill that. Burn goes to the dome. The infinite tricks on its own isn't a big deal. Correct. If it wasn't a one for zero, effectively. Uh, this hand is slow, but it's a keep, I think. Yeah, I feel like trans transmography really pushes the fact the the like the what's good about the Lixel deck out of the format. Like the fact that this takes their best card and just like kill it, get it out of here, make it make it much worse. Doesn't technically kill it, but makes it much much worse, much much worse. Starcaller Ancient's not bad. So what we want to draw... We want to not draw my action next turn because I want to Starcaller Ancient into play before we draw our Prophecy card. Uh, the, the Lixel deck isn't that cheap. High Infinite Tricks is dollar bills and so is... Um, so is Extinction. Change depending on the deck I'm playing. That's a lot of work. Maybe I could just make a variety of card frames. I guess I could make them all in advance and then just click through them. Maybe at some point. This is actually Lanupa's card frame that I'm playing in right now. That's unfortunate. Alright, so since we drew the Prophecy card already, I'm just going to Crackling Bolt and then... Use this. This will kind of encourage my opponent to um, cash in an extinction if he has it. So this transmog draws a card because it was prophesized. This is the transmography that was foretold. And again, I mentioned earlier that uh, I think I want one to two more shards in this deck. I think we lose more games to not having enough shards than we do to having too many, for sure. Shard. Shard. So we have to play a shard here, and then I'm just going to keep killing this guy, and this gives us, actually gives us another charge, because Crackling Bolt's great. And we can make another another Bambly bot here. A Wamba Lamba Ding Dong. Rawr. Crunch. And if he has an extinction and can cast it, he's probably going to cash it in to kill these three cards here. And then, nope, can't play it off of that, though. Then our next turn is going to consist of, uh, yep, resolve that. We're going to transmog this here. I mean, cheap is relative. Like, a $2 card is cheap compared to magic. That's three and a half now. I guess that one has gone up a little bit. It's a medium priced card. Transmogrifying listed. Look, it's so cheap. It's 0.2 tickets. <laughs> 
Ship with the Bumblebots, player landing pause site. Yeah, I love my Crackling cards. We're playing a couple Crackling Wits too, although that might be one of the cards that gets cut for more shards. Do, 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 do. More than 20 is unpurchasable. Let me tell you about this legacy deck that I'm playing in Wooster in two weeks. I'm going to block here because he's casting Extinction, I think. That's my read. My read is he's casting Extinction this turn. No, oh, just a blocker. Okay. That's for two. Play Starcaller Ancient here. Play this. Hopefully draw a Prophecy card, not a Shard. Ooh. Ooh, that's a good one to double up. Transmog the Stork. It's a 2 1 that when it deals, enters play. Nope, doesn't do anything. Sweet. 2 1 without text. Hey, Hecky. It's gonna take this damage. Really don't care. Now is this extinction, or you just have another another troop to block with? Because Darkcaller Ancient's very good, so that's worth getting this off the board if you can. Just kill, sure. Then he's just dead, actually. Right, Sands of Verdict of the Ancient Kings. No, we could have doubled that up. That's so sad. Ooh, combat training that draws a card. Do da, do da. Combat training that draws a card. Oh, will do da day? Boom, ba da boom. And more breach fire. Our opponent is very dead. Oh, will do da day? Bum 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 Gonna play this combat training oh do da day Despite all my rage I am still just a rat in the cage you Gonna shift life train over maybe Missed lethal How did I how did I miss lethal? This only does two. He countered my last rage fire. For for reference. No, it does not escalate if it's countered. Escalation is part of the resolution. Boom! 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 This is not life drain right now, right? Yep, just flight said fast. He put he shifted life drain over to this wild shot, so we just get to crash with the squad. Rawr, squad goals. Alright, so we get to get to play game three here, which is good, considering we only lost game one because I'm a big dumb stupid. Yeah, this deck does a lot of damage in the late game. All the rage fires just get super obnoxious. Uh I actually beat Metronomy while he was streaming today. So you want to see Metronomy's life gain deck get ranched by us? Rage Fire is is really obnoxious. This card just it escalates so quickly. And like in a world where you prophesize anything onto this, and then you double it with Starcaller Ancient, or you just hit it with the Thunderfield Elder, just like the the tick tick booms, and then even the copies get shuffled back into your deck after after they resolve, and they escalate all of them. So like, ugh.
Yeah, Sand's great. Starcaller Ancient into two Lantern Plus Light. Basically, anyone that's not aggroing you out, casting Lantern Plus Light on three against is basically just, like, ranging them. Bum 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 Well that that makes this hand just like the perfect curve. Hopefully hopefully our action that we prophesies onto is two card down so that when we draw not action next turn, play the star caller ancient, then double that action the following turn. Uh as decks about eighty to ninety. If you order on Hex Primal, you can get five percent off of your order with code Jeff5. All right, well, we're a little bit unlucky, and we drew the transmog right away, but that's fine. Having a transmog in tow is not the worst. He has two things. I guess he doesn't actually have to answer this. If he has an answer to this one, that's fine, too. Like, just just the line of lights alone are just, like, just like just casual draw six hanging out in our hand. And then, God forbid, he can't kill this, and then, like, these two. All right, pause means you have a transmog. No transmog. That's great. Maybe he has blood shard kill. Heat wave. Monarch, sure. Don't really care about this. Look at that! Look at all these draw cards. Alright, hopefully this card doesn't run away with the game like it did earlier. Oh, oh, crap, crap, crap. Ah, ah, I've made such a large mistake. Yes, you can use the Jeff 5 code every time you place an order there. It's not, not a one-time thing. That's, that's really unfortunate. I wish I had a Bumblebot to block this dork. I don't even have to pay for Magic Online cards, and I don't want to deal with the client. Come on, now. It's poop. It's a giant steaming pile of turd. All right, let's land a post site here. I'll take the shard that draws two cards. That's the nut. Attack for one. Alright, there's the high infinite tricks. Hopefully the fact that we've got two Lanopause site invested in the deck means we can we can work our way through these. So let's let's go ahead and block here. But not mind some rage fire. Ooh, when you play this, draw cards. I like to draw cards. All right, so let's play Lanupa's site here, get the last one of those out, and then I'll play my Thunderfield Seer and draw some cards, and then I'll play my Sapphire Shard and draw some cards, and then we'll transmografate his high infinite tricks and draw some cards. And then you draw a card, and you draw a card, and you draw a card. Everybody draws cards! Wait up to three target troops in the crypt. That's great. You got poop. You got a big old carrying poop right there. Lexel, sure, we've got a backup transmog here for this this invincible invincible dork. Prophesized, prophesized. We're gonna draw so many gods. I'm just a simple man who wants to draw all of the cards. Would this be better as a burn? This might have been better as an additional burn just because of we're kind of clunked up on how many cards we have right now. This 
So let's transmog this dork. Let's start with that. He could have a verdict of the Ancient Kings here. Which, if he does, that would be kind of bad for us. This is a 2-2. Two -two. Okay. I'm going to Crackling Bolt his carry and poop. I think I'm going to burn this one. He gets to gain some life off the carry and That's fine. I'm going to Arcane Focus first here because if I hit Shard plus Rage Fire, I'd rather do that instead of Burn. Take a Thunderfield. Dork here. Burn that one. It's like, again, we just we never run out of cards. That's all I want to do is just have things to continue clicking on. Oh, awesome, Anthony. Glad to have you. The game's a lot of fun. And, and you know, it's really funny. Like, um, I would have never tried Hex if Magic Online hadn't been so bad. So maybe maybe I should thank Watsi for making a crappy product. Cause, like, the more I played Hex, the more I was just like, you know, I really like this game, too. It's not even just that the client's great. It's that the actual game itself is, is a lot of fun. Destroy target. What a, what a next level play. I guess he knows that I'm going to have targets for that in my deck. That's sweet. I would have never brought that in this matchup. Man, we got the old one, two, three trifecta here. And I'm going to wait a turn on this focus because, again, for the Starcaller Ancient, we need to actually draw the card, not place it into our hand like Arcane Focus does. And the next turn, we can make another Bumblebot, which can chump his dork in the air. Awesome, Vtrop. You're the best. I mean, let me mod you. Have a, have a sword, friend. Stay a while and listen. During to 8 here, which is technically dead on board. But I have faith we're going to draw a ton of cards next turn and kill our opponent. Alright, so what does this do? This does 2 damage, and then we copy it. So, the first one of these... So the one I put on the stack is going to do 4. So let's target this guy, and then it copies. So the first one does 2... So resolve this one for two. This escalates. And both of these draw and both of these draw cards, which is great. I'm just gonna target this dork here. And I'm actually gonna target this with both of them. Because I really need to kill this. And if he has verdict here, I want to make sure that this thing dies. And look at that, we just we just drew another rage for God, this deck is so good! This deck is so good. He's just, he's literally just dead. We don't even need two rage fires. This one, this one does 22. I know about you, but I'm feeling 22. Look at that. Got another, just like, what is this in the bank? This is going to be 14, 6. It's just like a 30 damage rage fire right here. GG's, Varanus. GG's. And we've still got seven cards in our hand. Eight cards! We were drawing another card from the Rage Fire! There was... Can we... So someone asked earlier if we could beat the life gain deck. The answer, my friends, the answer is yes. Because we... What was it? We overkilled him for five there, and we were going to deal another 30 and still have seven cards and, like, 12 power on the board. <laughs> ah, this deck's lit up. All right, what are we doing? Let's... Let's, um... Uh, let's take a look at uh, some changes, some change of runes I want to make. Um, uh, I think I want one more shard in the main deck. These these burns have been a solid medium. I think this batch of removal, actually, maybe I don't want all the Ziggy's games in the main. There's been less Rocket Rabbits lately, and you can you can even beat the Rocket Rabbit deck without, but just by like rage firing them out sometimes. 
I don't know what's strong against this deck, which is terrifying. I've been thinking, I've been thinking about things that beat this deck, and there's none coming to mind. Like the games I've been losing, I've been making mistakes, or just the decks like you just like stumble on shards or flood out a little bit, like we did in that second to last match. So, um, yeah, I think I can put the third zigs in the board. Yeah, I'm gonna cut the zig and I'm gonna bring in at least one more shard. I could I could even see two more shards. And actually, so people will say this is greedy. But you want to think about it in this context. Um, I'm actually going to cut this Crackling Wit, and I'm going to play a Crackling Vortex. And it seems kind of greedy to play to play a shard that doesn't make any thresholds in a deck like this that um, that has, you know, needs blue and needs double red for Rage Fire. But you have to think about this. This was previously a, a, a non-shard. So this is kind of a shard and a non-shard at the same time. So I think I think I want to try this. I think I want to try going up to 24 shards and adding a sapphire shard here and adding a adding a crackling vortex. And that might this might be one too many shards now, but I want to give it a try. Definitely definitely think I want to give that a try. Yeah, it could this this could just swap back to the other crackling vortex too. All right, what what cards haven't been good in the reserves? I just I never I never want this Electrofry, and I never want this Burning Tendrils. And these Oracle Songs, I also just really haven't wanted. I've wanted four Transmog. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put a four Transmog in the reserves. This is kind of like Storm, isn't it? And I wanted to put the other game in the board. Rage fire, right? Hey, what are there? What are cards in the reserves do we want? Someone messaged me, uh, K Smith, Kyle, uh, one of my buddies, um, a sub here too, he's a good guy, said he was playing some counter magics in the reserves. I don't, I don't hate that. Just like another thing to bring in against like ramp decks. Oh, I didn't actually put the game in the, in the reserves, did I? Game, Ziggy's game. Okay, so. And maybe, so someone else mentioned that maybe we want Heat Waves instead of the Electro Fries. Maybe, maybe I just want a Coward Split. I, I don't even know if I want Heat Wave though, to be honest. Any other, any other cards that seem sweet for the reserves? Maybe I could leave the Oracle Songs in. They're probably fine against like Winter Moon and some of the more grindy decks. Yeah, I think I'm okay leaving Songs in here. So I think this is the configuration I'd like to try next. Like I said, I've really been feeling like I wanted more shards, so I'm like up a sapphire shard. The extra sapphire shard makes counter magic more castable too, which is nice. Crackling vortex instead of crackling wit. That could go either way. I always I always like to favor playing more shards than less shards in decks like this. And just all decks in general, actually. Like the control deck I've been playing has 27 shards in it, which I really like. I guess this means we have less. Yeah, I'm gonna start on 23. I really like that crackling wit. I really like that crackling wit um, enables turn two bumblebots. The turn, the turn two bumblebots are really good, and basically crackling bolt and crackling wit both enable turn two bumblebots. 